my main field of research is uh, in time series econometrics. And by this, we mean uh, we analyze the evolution of economic data over time. For instance, the stock returns, commodity prices, inflation, so on and so forth. And in particular, uh, my research focus on forecasting techniques. So when a forecaster says, for instance, uh, inflation rate next month would be 1%, let's say, with all the information that I have, and I have a confidence about this forecast of, say, 95%, this is a very complex statement. And what we need to do is to evaluate how good the forecast is. So what my research does is uh, to develop tools to assess the goodness of the forecast. I, together with my graduate students at the University of California, Riverside, we have uh, designed a device uh, that we call um, autocontour-based tests, that they are very powerful tools uh, to assess whether the time series model is good or is not, and uh, whether the assumptions that they are behind to construct these models are justified by the information that is contained in the data. The second line of research, or a parallel uh, line of research, uh, relates to the analysis of what we call interval value data. And this, uh, as the name says, uh, interval value time series is a collection of intervals. And this type of time series uh, is understood as opposed to a classical time series where what we have, instead of a point, that is the classical approach, a point per year or per month or whatever frequency you have, what we have is a collection of intervals over time. So for instance, if we are looking at stock prices, just to give you an example, Google. Um, on January 27, the maximum price of Google was about 717, and the minimum price was about uh, 695. So what we do is for every uh, day or whatever frequency you are working on with, uh, we collect these intervals from the minimum to the maximum price. And uh, we have a collection over time of these intervals. And our interest is to understand the dependence of these objects. And given uh, the dependence, we built models, time series models for intervals. And of course, as before, the objective is uh, to get a forecast, and eventually, right now, we are in the process of building these models and understanding dependence, but eventually what we want to do is to reach again the final stage of any time series model that is the build-up of a forecast. As applications of my research, um, we have many, because uh, what I'm interested is in developing methodology in time series. So, any science um, in which a researcher has a model and wants to build a prediction, um, eventually he or she has to evaluate the prediction. And uh, my tools are just uh, very good tools in order to assess uh, how good the forecast is. So in principle, uh, the applications are very general. But I can give you a couple of examples of the latest findings that we have on applying uh, this methodology. Uh, one application um, deals with the evaluation of what we call dynamic duration models. And a duration is just the time that uh, passes between any two consecutive uh, trades. So the literature so far uh, has uh, worked uh, many models with a set of assumptions. And with this autocontour-based test, what we have found is that uh, the models work pretty well when uh, we are trying to understand dependence and forecasting of large durations. And large duration means the trades happen uh, from time to time. But uh, whenever the duration is very small, and that, it, that is when uh, trading is very uh, uh, thick, so there is a lot of trading in the market, then the small durations, they are not uh, correctly modeled by the specifications that we have currently in the literature. So this is an open area. So we need uh, to build up uh, new models uh, to understand uh, how model durations behave. Another application uh, deals with um, the correlation between trading activities um, across several stocks. Uh, 
for instance, we have an application to uh, bank stocks. And what we are observing is that when there is a lot of trading in the market, uh, then the banks are not correlated. By that we mean that each one does its own activity and they are not looking at the neighbor. But um, whenever trading is very thin, uh, then the correlation that is stronger in the sense that uh, um, the trading patterns of one bank are really similar to the trading pattern of the neighbor, for instance. In the area of interval value econometrics, we have also very interesting findings. Um, we have found that we want to forecast um, extreme prices, extreme returns. Uh, we have a much better performance of our model, so it's better to forecast, or we know how to forecast uh, extreme uh, returns, as opposed to the forecast of, of average returns. When we try to forecast average returns, this is a lost battle, and this is a result that is in the literature for many, many years. But now here with stream returns, we find that uh, the prediction is pretty good. And not only pretty good, we also find that the intensity of trading in a given market is a factor that affects uh, the evolution of stream returns. Well, um, I have several projects going on with uh, several faculty um, at the Department of Statistics. Um, the first project um, is with uh, Professor Esther Ruiz, uh, who is an expert on bootstrap techniques. And uh, what we are doing, uh, together with Professor Elena Vega and their graduate student, Joao Gonzalez, is to generalize the autocontour methodology. So we want to offer um, a new generation of tests such that uh, the researcher uh, has to make uh, the least number of assumptions. And in particular, we would like the researcher not to think about the functional form of the density uh, that is used in the time series model. So right now we have uh, some preliminary results and it seems that uh, the idea uh, is gonna work. The second project is also with uh, Professor Ruiz, and in this case, um, we want uh, to generalize, again, the modeling techni techniques that we have for interval value data. And uh, in particular, what we want to do is to offer a robust um, estimation and testing uh, methodology and once more, what we are trying to do over there is to relax the assumption on the conditional density of the variable of interest. And finally, a third project is with Professor uh, Rosalillo and her student, Raul Torres. And uh, what we are doing here uh, is different from what I have explained so far, um, but uh, nevertheless, it's based on some work of mine that I did several years back. And what we want to do is uh, to expand on the idea of a measure of risk that I call value in stress. And in particular, what we would like is to have uh, high dimensional models behind this uh, measure of risk. And we would like to generalize the distributional assumptions. So far, uh, the assumption that we are working with is multivariate normal. But this is an assumption that is not uh, satisfied most of the time in economic and financial data. And we would like to generalize this measure of risk to any other uh, assumption, a statistical assumption on the distribution.